Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the origins of the Milky Way and discuss a little bit more about what happened to our galaxy about 10 billion years ago. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So in some of the previous videos, actually in a lot of videos, we've discussed the origin of, for example, our solar system, also how the Earth-Moon system was created when an object known as Theia collided with Earth, but we never really discussed how our galaxy was made. And so today I wanted to discuss a little bit more about this recent study that uh, very thoroughly analyzed the origin of the Milky Way. And specifically, uh, the collision, the very, very large collision that it received around 10 billion years ago. This paper from Nature magazine that you can find in the description below talks about uh, what happened to the sort of primordial Milky Way when it collided with another galaxy known as Gaia Enceladus. Here is a very rough summary that was created by Gabriel Perez Diaz uh, that shows you that about 10 billion years ago the galaxies collided and the present day galaxy was created as a result of this. But how exactly do we know all of this and also um, what exactly may have happened? Now it's very difficult to answer the second question uh, because, well, we're still kind of early in our understanding of galactic collisions. We have a lot of simulations, like for example here's one from Universe Sandbox where you can see uh, two relatively different galaxies colliding and we can actually even see what happens as a result. And we've also seen a lot of galactic collisions out there with, for example, Hubble telescope. But in most cases, um, our actual understanding of the process is still only limited to simulations like this one you see on the screen. So in some sense, we do understand it, but in most other senses, it's still kind of new to us. We do, however, know that the galactic collisions started happening almost immediately. This is the earlier such collision we've detected only a few months ago, and this happened only a few million years after the creation of um, galaxies. And uh, this one here was known as B14 65666, and the actual image that was uh, discovered only a few months ago from when I'm making this video looked something like this, and this was quite astounding in that it seems that galactic collisions started happening basically almost right away. But our own galaxy, our beautiful Milky Way, uh, did not receive these large collisions until only about 3 billion years after its existence. As a matter of fact, it seems that the early Milky Way galaxy was relatively calm. It may have absorbed some of the galaxies, some of the smaller galaxies nearby, um, so basically dwarf galaxies that, that were circling around it, and um, it did increase its mass a little bit, but for the first 3 billion years, it was just a typical disk galaxy, uh, not really a spiral yet, and it was uh, absorbing a lot of mass, but also creating a lot of stars. And today we know that eventually the Milky Way will collide with the Andromeda galaxy, this is going to be probably the largest collision um, our galaxy will ever experience, and eventually these two will... Well, first of all, they'll do something similar to what you see in this simulation here. They'll basically um, destroy each other in a sense. But then eventually combine into a single um, galaxy that is going to be ridiculously massive because, as you can see, there's another third object there, that's the Triangle of Galaxy, that will also join them at some point as well. So this will be the sort of ultimate galactic collision in our own neighborhood. But today we know that, uh, well, our galaxy definitely had collisions before as well, and the first such large collision very likely happened 10 billion years ago. Now, uh, the simulations for it are still kind of not really that accurate, uh, but our understanding of what happened and also what happened to the galaxy afterwards is quite accurate. And all of this is based on the analysis from the beautiful Gaia telescope that in the last few years was able to extremely accurately map nearby stars, millions of nearby stars, within about 6,500 light years away from our system, and we now have very accurate location, very accurate motion, and also very accurate distance to those stars. And because of this, not only can we now predict what's going to happen to the galaxy, we can also look back in time and see what cause certain features of the galaxy. And this is exactly what this particular paper did. They looked at the nearby stars and uh, realized that uh, of all of the stars they studied, 
There was one group of stars that they referred to as the red type that had very high metallicity, basically very high content of don hydrogen, and another group that they referred to as the blue type that had very low metallicity, and they both had relatively different ages, relatively different compositions, but together these two groups um, may have come from two different places. And they realized that the blue, non-metal rich uh, stars probably came from a completely different galaxy a long time ago, roughly around 10 billion years ago. They also realized that both of these galaxies were roughly around 3 billion years when this happened, both of them were creating a lot of stars, and as a result of this collision, um, they actually increased the amount of stars that was being created in the Milky Way dramatically. So Milky Way kind of became a very active galaxy for a little bit, and then within about 3 to 4 billion years after the collision, Milky Way settled into its shape that we have today, and um, remained same way since. In other words, this shape here was very likely established about uh, 6 billion years ago and hasn't really changed much except for occasional smaller collision with dwarf galaxies that did transform its shape a little bit, like for example giving it the ripples about which I've talked about in one of the previous videos, I think it's somewhere above my head right now. And although the initial uh, star production right after the collision was probably really really high, we don't really know how many stars, but there were a lot of stars that were being created, because all of this dust that you see mixing here then had a chance to combine into larger stars, larger objects and so on. Um, following this, um, after about 2 to 3 billion years, the actual star creation sort of settled and has not changed since. So in the last 6 billion years, it's very likely that the Milky Way galaxy has been producing roughly around, um, well, in terms of masses, about 1.3 to 1.6 masses of the Sun per year. And uh, this has not changed for a really long time and will not change until the collision with the Andromeda galaxy. But what's unusual about this particular collision is that it took so long uh, for Milky Way to get its first major collision. We know that it received smaller collisions, but this major collision uh, took 3 billion years. This suggests that it's very likely the Milky Way galaxy was in a relatively remote location with no other larger galaxy in its vicinity. Because today we know that Galactic collisions happen very frequently, there's a lot of them, and we even have a very unusual term for some of the galaxies that collide with other galaxies. We call them galactic cannibals, basically because they eat up other galaxies. And today Milky Way is seen as such cannibal because it's absorbed a lot of galaxies, smaller galaxies, over time, with the Gaia and Saladus galaxy being the biggest such object uh, for another two and a half to maybe three billion years until Andromeda decides to uh, combine with ours. Now it's not really clear just yet what's going to happen to Milky Way after the Andromeda collision, but today we believe that they're probably going to become sort of like a mixture or a hybrid and turn into a somewhat shapeless, uh, what's known as an elliptical galaxy, basically a galaxy that doesn't really have a disk anymore. And that's because both galaxies are relatively similar in mass and in size, so neither one of them is a cannibal anymore, they're just combining into one. But although it's somewhat difficult for us to predict what's going to happen in a few billion years, we can definitely try to analyze what has already happened, and this is why Gaia Telescope allows us to do all of this with so much precision now. And just to finish all of this, I actually wanted to try to recreate this collision or something similar to this collision using Universe Sandbox because we do have these beautiful, very realistic looking galaxies in the simulation now. So here is the Milky Way, what it may have looked like uh, approximately 10 billion years ago, and this is the galaxy that it's about to swallow known as Gaia Enceladus. Now I didn't really put them in the location that you saw in this image, mostly because we're not even sure if this is how it happened. We just know they collided, we don't really know what inclination they had to each other, um, we also don't really know how fast they were moving, we just know that it sort of happened. Once we have more data coming from Gaia, we'll be able to kind of go back in time and find out how exactly it happened, for now though, we're not really sure. Which is why our collision is going to be basically really simple. Two galaxies, one larger one, one smaller one, colliding with one another. Now, uh, for this to be very accurate, we of course would need to have dark matter, but it's very difficult to simulate dark matter using um, a simple computer that I have at home, so we're just going to have visual representation of all of this. 
And so here, from this particular angle, uh, we can kind of see that these galaxies maintain their shapes until the last uh, moment, right before the collision happened. And uh, what's in really interesting about this is that the stars that were present in both galaxies are still out there in our galaxy, and also um, we can discover them and we can study them in a lot more detail to try to find out what those galaxies were like before the collision. Some of these stars, specifically the red dwarfs, um, are still alive and well, and they still emit enough light for us to study them. And so here, here's that collision, and as you can see, the Milky Way cannibalized the smaller galaxy, absorbed it into itself, and I just saw the black holes accidentally leaving the system. So yeah, it looks like we destroyed the whole thing. And that's because I think the black holes here were a little bit too massive. I need to make them smaller. And unfortunately, even in the second simulation, I'm, my suspicion is that the black holes will probably not really play along. But anyway, you can see how beautiful all of this is. You can see how the larger galaxy is cannibalizing the smaller galaxy, um, basically absorbing all of the matter, and all of this will cause a tremendous explosion in star formation. And then we have this expulsion of some of the matter. This is based on the black hole interaction which will be followed by the creation of a somewhat stable cylindrical shape that will then become the Milky Way as we know it today. In other words, this shape right here will be formed after about 3 to 4 billion years of stars just circling around, uh, being destroyed, being created, and uh, within about 3 to 4 billion years it will stabilize into the shape that we know today. But in this particular simulation, it looks like creating a spiral galaxy did not go very well again, uh, we may have failed yet again. Now, as you can see, it's not a very easy task. Um, as a matter of fact, this is why we believe galaxies are not just a collection of stars and matter. Today, we believe that there's a lot more other things involved, including, of course, dark matter, that will have contributed to the stability of the shape of the galaxy and also uh, prevent the galaxy from doing this, from falling apart. So this present day shape of the Milky Way has definitely been formed and shaped by not just the interaction of matter, but also a very strong influence from other mysterious things like dark matter. And possibly without it, we would not even have anything that looked like this. Instead, it would look something similar to what I just created right here in Universe Sandbox. Anyway, on that note, Check out the paper that I mentioned in the description below, it's a very interesting analysis of what may have happened to the Milky Way about 10 billion years ago. And in some of the future videos we'll explore some other unusual things we've discovered about our galaxy that you may have not known before. So do come back tomorrow to learn something you probably didn't know. And most importantly, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, subscribe if you still haven't, and let me know in the comments below what other things about our galaxy you'd like to find out that you don't really know yet. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.